three, two, one. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. You're the best. He is? Look, I blew it. Mine was all <laughs> muddy and his is pro, even with those shoes. Okay, well, thanks everybody for being here. This is uh, one of those events where I have notes, but I don't think I'm going to need them because of how long we've been working on this. My name is Tim Schaefer. I'm the executive director of the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission, and we're here today to celebrate uh, the fact that we have brought Lower Woods Pond back for the residents of Wayne County and north northeastern Pennsylvania. Um, I'll introduce some folks uh, initially and then make some remarks and then hand it over to them uh, for remarks of their own. But Commissioner Charlie Charlesworth, who's uh, in the audience, we have a board of 10 commissioners. Charlie's one of our boating at large commissioners. Um, and is also from Northeast PA, so really happy to have Charlie here. Representative John Fritz, who um, literally, I think I was his first meeting in his office when he got elected talking about the dams. So thanks to John for being here. Senator Lisa Baker, who's been at our side throughout this, <laughs> these travails through her whole district. Uh, Daryl Pierce is our area fishery manager. He's going to talk a little bit about how the lake will get rebuilt and what the golden shiners that we're going to be stocking today will be doing. And then Paul Urbanic is the director of our Bureau of Engineering. You may have seen he and I shaking hands at the end, like out there at the little moment earlier today, uh, celebrating the fact that this was brought back. So um, that'll be our lineup of the speakers with brief remarks, but just to kick it off, so <laughs> this wasn't part of my script, but driving here, I had two metaphors on the drive that sort of summed it up. At one point I saw a crow eating a dead steak on the road. And I think a lot of points people thought that these lakes were just going to be dead and they weren't going to come back. A little bit further on, this is true, I saw a snapping turtle crossing the road and he's going real slow and I'm on this rural road and no one is around. So I just stopped, let the thing cross the road and I thought that sort of sums up what's happened here uh, with the lakes in Wayne County. And I would say one down, three to go um, when it comes to the lakes here. We're here to celebrate lower woods, but please know that we're going to go to construction on Belmont to fix that lake this summer. And then the highly anticipated Miller and White Oak projects are both coming together with the permitting coming together and fully expect to be out to bid this year uh, for both of those projects. So what you see here, we're going to, going to be hopefully replicating uh, across Wayne County um, in, in the coming months. So what, what you have here, um, when we got the bad news about having to drain this back in, in, back in 2012, um, there was a leak in the dam. And we manage about 50 dams across Pennsylvania, and 30 of them have been in this high hazard, unsafe category. Um, you can feel free to go in front of the camera. Come on. <laughs> me, You're good. No sweat. <laughs> um, so... About 50 dams that we manage on behalf of the Commonwealth, and uh, about 15 years ago, to meet current dam safety standards, we realized we needed to fix uh, about 30 of them, and it's about $150 million. So over the course of now four governors, um, multiple members of the General Assembly, thankfully um, Senator Baker has been with us the whole time, um, we got an initial amount of funding uh, released, but was backed by Governor Rendell to begin the design. 
Then when Act 89 uh, was passed, that diverted the full amount of motorboat fuel tax revenue to our agency. And one of the primary things that we do with those dollars, and I remember talking to Mike Pfeiffer about this a lot, saying, hey, those motorboat fuel tax dollars from Lake Olympia Pack ought to be staying here locally. And we can tell you that they are to help fund projects like this. And then Governor Wolf, on two different occasions, released about $25 million uh, uh, for various projects across Pennsylvania. Throughout the way, we've been taking advantage of other state, federal grant programs. Local sportsmen's clubs have helped us um, to put the funding together to make projects like this happen. So Lower Woods ended up being about a $2.6 million project. Again, Paul is going to explain um, sort of how the dams work. We're actually standing on top of three dams, but that's wanted to give you that landscape to put this one in, within context of, of sort of the monumental effort that we've been uh, uh, under for the last really 10 plus years. But that snap and turtle did good across the road. Um, we're getting across the road and we're really happy to be here today. So with that, I'll, yeah, good. We'll take that for applause. Um, and so with that, I'll turn it over to my friend, Senator Baker for some remarks. Sure. Good morning, everyone. What a beautiful day to celebrate in Wayne County. And Tim, to your perseverance, your commitment, and your tenacity, when we first started talking about the impact of losing all of these high hazard dams and what it meant to our sporting heritage in Wayne County, it was devastating. Um, and, and so to you, to the board, Mr. Charlesworth, to our friend Bill Gibney, who couldn't be here, thank you for your leadership at the board level. This is a monumental day, and I'm delighted just to be here to celebrate. When we think about the impact, not just to the people who live here in Wayne County, but the people who come and visit. We have friends here from Bucks County who came over today because they hope to relocate here. We know that assets like Lower Woods are going to help us bring more people here who want to live and work and play in Northeastern Pennsylvania. So congratulations, delighted to be here. Thanks, Senator. Thank you. So next we'll have John Fritz, and before, before he comes up, so I mentioned how when he got elected, and we had talked to Sandy Major about this a lot, but he comes in, and literally, I don't think he had, he was barely had moved his office in. And little story, I don't I think he might remember this. The reason I was his first meeting was because he had just gotten elected, and I was I was going deer hunting in Northeast PA that weekend. I thought, well, maybe I could sneak in a meeting and then get out in the woods in the afternoon. So there was some self interest in the timing of that meeting. Um, but when I broke the news to him, similar with Senator Baker, that hey, we've got you know a lot of dams. Um, that need to get fixed here. We think we've got a plan. We think we can get the funds together. Um, uh, John Fritz has been a great partner the whole time. So we'll turn it over to Representative Fritz. Thank you, Tim. Appreciate you. So, friends, uh, his his uh, his take on things is accurate. When we got started with this process, no kidding, I actually had a full head of hair, <laughs> and now look at me. But uh, but to be standing here on this beautiful structure built by local contractors, this is just a. a a remarkable job and, and I guess I'm just gonna sum it up and I'm just gonna put it out there hot damn <laughs> this is a, a beautiful day for Wayne County and uh, you know oftentimes people think that their politicians their elected officials are full of hot air and boy I've had a lot of telephone calls and a lot of emails to that effect and people that had just totally lost hope that these lakes were gonna come back online well today right here right now as we refill this lake this is proof positive that they are coming back online and the next three are also in the queue. It's going to happen. And it's all about quality of life for our fishermen and for life and, and uh, good times in Wayne County. So we appreciate Tim Schaefer, Fish and Boat, and all of you for being here. Thank you. Thanks, John. So I'll, I'll use my other damn joke. So he said, hot damn. When it, with, all, with all these dams across Pennsylvania, my kids who are now 20, I'd have to go to lots of evening meetings like, like one that where I met uh, the commissioner here. And my kids would joke and say, Dad, you have to go to another damn meeting. And it was fun for them. Like they could, you know, swear when they were 10, 12 years old. Um, but we did have one of those damn meetings in the high school. And there we were talking about Miller and White Oak. And, and Commissioner, before he got here, I said, you know, one down, three to go. And, and the, the permitting is well underway. We're really optimistic that we'll be out to bid on Miller and White Oak soon. Uh, Belmont will be going to construction this year, but we are in this for the long haul. Nothing in government happens as quickly as you would like it. And I, I had this conversation with one of our staff, like sometimes like, I don't even really think I'm cut out for this, right? They're like, how do you get these things to move faster? But I think part of being cut out for it is 
having the patience, having good people uh, like Paul, who's our chief engineer to and Bureau of Engineering director to, to help you to navigate this, um, you know, you get through it. So uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Brian Smith, who's been along for the ride the whole way. <laughs> thank you, Tim. Yep. So I really just want to say, you know, uh, thank you to Fish and Boat. Fish and Boat has been a great partner in Wayne County. We're still number one in out-of-state fishing licensing sales. Uh, we have a lot of people that come here from all over the world to fish because we have world-class fisheries. And the work that they're doing, Fish and Boat is doing in Wayne County, uh, I just can't say enough about. I was at the very same meeting that Tim was at and Lisa Baker and uh, Jonathan Fritz when we had a meeting over in uh, Forest City at the school district to talk about what was going on with the high hazard dams. I watched Tim shed a tear when he was able to say, I could tell you now, and I can't always say this, we have the money in place to rebuild these dams and this will happen. So to see this come to fruition just should reinstill in everybody that the integrity of Fish and Boat is there, it's strong, they have a partnership here with us in Wayne County and we'll have a partnership in Wayne County for a long, long time. The work that they're doing at the fish hatchery and the work that they're doing at these ponds, at Lake Wall and Paul Pack with the walleye and, uh, you know, and the trout that we have, is just incredible. And people actually do come here from all over the world. So thank you to Fish and Boat. Thank you for the partnership that we have, and I look forward to all the projects that we have lined up for the future. And, and again, I can't say enough about these guys. Thank you, Tim. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, Brian talked about our, our presence here in Wayne County. Would, if Officer Kramer, if you could raise your hand, our uh, local waterways conservation officer. If you don't know him, please introduce yourself. Barry and Jess from from Pleasant Mount, uh, they'll be part of our ceremonial stocking of, of Golden Shiners. But, you know, we're all in on Wayne County. So if you have not been to the Pleasant Mount State Fish Hatchery, uh, they're doing great work there. We've got more, uh, more in the works. Uh, had a really nice event there with Wayne tomorrow. Uh, back, literally, it was the day before the opening day of trout season when it would not stop raining. Uh, but luckily, it finally has. Um, but what we did that day was a walleye spawning demonstration. We, we took walleye out of Lake Willapawpack spawned them there at the hatchery and those will go go statewide to help help replenish our walleye populations uh, so really i'd say the star of the show would be is paul or paul urbanic if paul could come up paul um, is the director of our bureau of engineering and I'll, I'll put you on the spot paul and before you start maybe you can say how, how many how many dam projects are you managing right now how many office projects just put it into context what you're what you're doing statewide too many to put in numbers okay Probably, yeah, 20 25 total yeah capital projects good and good more after that. so we'll have paul explain what you're looking at here is actually three dams you may have noticed and after we're done we can we can take a walk and check everything out that's super cool when you look over that that uh the, the uh, fence there but uh, paul if you could just explain the folks what they're looking at what they see now and what they will see sure i'd say the best part of today is that everyone has developed an engineer sense of humor <laughs> <laughs> the damn jokes never get old for me uh so if anyone doesn't know the history of Lower Woods Pond, it's quite interesting. It was built back in the, and I won't take, make it this long-winded, but it was built back in the 1840s, part of the canal system. Fish and Boat um, rehabbed it once back in the uh, late 1950s, early 1960s, and then we rehabbed it again, obviously, now. Um, it's made up of three different dams that form a 90-acre 90 90 acre pool. You're standing on one. One's through the uh, woods you walk through, and another one's at the end of the parking lot you pulled in on. Each one of them is considered a high hazard, so if any one of them fails, you know, it can jeopardize the, the lives and property of people living downstream. Um, so now that the project's complete, um, we're going to start with the refill process. The refill process essentially takes, um, it'll take a few weeks. We're hoping to have it complete by um, the 4th of July. It's all controlled through the big principal spillway and auxiliary spillway you see behind us. It's called a labyrinth weir. Um, the old dam actually had two spillways, a principal spillway that was located on dam one, an auxiliary spillway that was located on dam two. Uh, we combined those into one central location to make it easier and, and more efficient, really. Uh, the old spillway was about 40 feet long. This one is only 100 feet long in length, but it can handle six times the capacity of the old one for water flow. So it's, it can now handle the problem maximum precipitation, which is the uh, design storm for a high hazard dam. And that's about 30 inches in 24 hours. Um, 
now that um, we're starting the refill process, we're also going to be, you know, brushing up the area. There's still constructions mostly complete, 90% complete. We still have a few finishing touches. We still have some grass that needs to, to be seeded and replanted, overseed. We need, need to make sure grass is growing. Um, we're going to be working on the boat launch ramp, putting some new docks in, and just uh, dressing up the areas for the, the for the boaters and anglers. And then uh, on top of that, we have many more projects to come here in Wayne County. Uh, Belmont Lake, which is right down the road. I guess they're all right down the road. But Belmont Lake is um, it's it's a recreation lake, but it also supplies water to our Pleasant Mount Fish Hatchery. That's going to get started here uh, later early this summer, probably late June into July, or in July. And then we have uh, Miller Pond and White Oak Pond, which are uh, likely to go out to bid late this summer and be in construction next year. So, good things to come. Any questions on the dams, other lakes, projects? Thanks, Thanks, no, another yeah. dam, Joe? Yeah, no, no dam. <laughs> So again, we're going to have plenty of opportunities for questions. And we walk down there, Paul can explain how this is so much more efficient for inspections, for operations. And, and we'll literally, you'll be able to turn the valve to help to fill this thing up. What you see here um, is a natural pond. And the reason that, you know, Miller Pond, White Oak Pond, uh, Lower Woods Pond, there were ponds there to begin with. So but, but very shallow, not, not much of a recreational fishery. But when you add the dam to it and build it up, it really just makes it a lot more um, of an attractive place to fish, boat, and to recreate. So that's why they're called ponds, because there was a pond there to begin with. The labyrinth spillway that you'll see when Paul, uh, when we walk over there, I mean, picture, it's about surface area, right? So if a dam's this long, if that big, in this big bad storm comes, all the water has to go over it, because if you can squeeze it up like an accordion, the water can go over different parts of it in a uh, more narrow area. So it's really cool. And we've employed, employed that at a couple other of our facilities. So um, what's that? Yeah, Charlie? Okay. One of the uh, uh, next alternative, Daryl Pierce. Daryl is our area fisheries manager. And I will make an offer. This is a sincere offer. If you want to do the coolest thing you've ever done um, when it comes to, to, to fishing related, get out with Daryl on the upper Delaware River for... Um, night seining for American Shad, where we, and maybe Daryl, you can even tell what that looks like, how you cast these nets out. Or go out for wild uh, browns and rainbows uh, on the upper Delaware for night electrofishing. Members of the media, if you want to see it, our legislative partners, commissioner, it is the coolest thing uh, you'll ever see as we go out and try to assess what the, uh, the health of the fisheries are. But we're going to start with Golden Shiners here, and Daryl can also give you a sense of sort of how long this takes we are about, I'm really happy to say that we've just removed catch and release restrictions on another dam that we built out in western Pennsylvania. We'll initially have the catch and release restrictions here as we build it up, but a couple years, I mean, you'll be taking fish home to eat. So, Daryl, if you can give them a preview of what they're going to be seeing here. Thanks, Tim. Yeah. Hey, I, I do have to mention you forgot my surcharge when I take people out, right? It's, it's just a paltry amount, you know, and people, they like it, All right? Buy a fishing license. That's right, buy a fishing license. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, folks. Uh, pleasure to have you. And to be honest, I'm a very excited to have this lake back. Um, it's one of our quality bass panfish fisheries in uh, Upper Wayne County. And, and I know people would like to have it and, and come back to it. You're out, you all are absolutely right. This will be a great lake once it's here. We are, we are looking to return this to what it was, a quality fishery. Uh, fishes that eventually we envision being here would be like largemouth bass, uh, black crappie, yellow perch, uh, bluegills, and eventually we hope to get it back into the walleye program. Uh, getting to the walleye program will take a while though because we need to get all the forage fish established. So what we're stocking this morning, even though it, it's a ceremonial stocking, later this season in 24 we'll put in the real stock of golden shiners. And that's the foundation of any lake. We have to have the forage there so that the desirable fish that people are looking for uh, have something to eat. It's all about who eats who and how much. So when we put those in today, you'll probably see the bluegill. They'll enjoy them, right? But uh, we're, looking, we're looking to get a quality fishery back for you folk. Now, the restoration of this, usually in a traditional method, takes about five years because we start from nothing. We start from scratch. 
unfortunately this lake has a 50 acre remnant pool. It's probably already well established out there with, with bluegills and bass and pumpkin seeds and, and bullheads. So what I'm going to try and do is come back this fall when the lake is full, do a survey, find out what we have. And then from there, we'll custom tailor how much or how long we have to go through a restoration stocking. Worst case scenario, it's only five years. Best case scenario, we should be out of here within a year or two. All right, oops. So pending, pending on what happens from that survey, we'll, we'll determine and we'll publish it on, on a biologist report. So it will be out for the public. Uh, of what we're going to do in terms of stocking. But we'll start with the Golden Shiners and we're going to start with what's called what's called the Vance uh, Fingerling Largemouth Bass. They're about this big. And then they'll go in this season and then from there we'll either continue that for, for 2025 and on as well as adding in Black Crappie and Yellow Perch. Um, or we'll just say, hey, it looks great. It's already established. And all we got to do now is wait for the, for the population to bulk up a little bit. All right, so that's the that's general process. Now, one thing that, that folk uh, always ask about, and, and I'll address a little bit of it, is yeah, there's a lot of terrestrial vegetation behind us right now that grew in while the lake was down. That's not bad, that's actually a good thing. All right, so all that terrestrial vegetation, once it gets inundated, it will start to break down. And again, it's forming the foundation of the food web. So the detritivores, the, the, the animals that eat plant material, We'll take that and then they'll be eaten by fish and so forth and so forth through the food web. So it will help the, the lake come back. Plus the, the trees that get inundated, that's black crappie habitat. They like it. So hopefully we'll get some of a new lake effect here, which will help the growth of the fish. Great. Is that covered? You nailed it. Thanks, Yeah, Carol. there we go. Yep. I'll get that out yep. of your way. And I'm not kidding. It's, it's so much fun getting out with Daryl. But I, I do want to emphasize that last point. You know, if you watch a fishing show on TV, where are they casting? They're casting by the stumps. So th when the water comes up, I mean, you'll, these trees will be sticking out of the water. People are like, oh, my gosh, you blew it. You messed up on the design. That's, that's intentional. As Daryl said, they'll die back. That provides a shot of nutrients for the basis of the food chain. It provides refuge area for the small fish. It provides ambush area for the... Uh, um, for the larger fish. So again, that, that vegetation is a good thing to have there um, and will ultimately die back. So um, with that, I'll turn it over to Charlie Charlesworth. Charlie is our boating at large commissioner for Pennsylvania and a Northeast PA resident. Good morning. On behalf of the board of commissioners, uh, I'd like to say that projects like this give us such great pride in being members of the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. But it's also an opportunity, opportunity for me as a boating commissioner uh, to dis discuss Safe Boating Week, which is coming up in another week, uh, 18th, I believe it starts. Eight. So we're asking everyone to practice safe boating, no DUI while boating, and I'm going to steal a little bit of Tim's thunder. Wear your life vest. Thank you. Thanks, Charlie. Good message. Yeah, that's, and I'm, I'm glad Charlie said that. National Safe Boating Week is always the week before uh, Memorial Day. Annually, 80% of the boating fatalities are people not wearing their life jacket. And I, I'll be honest, I don't care if you remember anything we said about this dam today. But if you remember to wear your life jacket, uh, there is nothing worse. And Clyde hears me say it all the time that my phone lights up on a Saturday afternoon and it's him or someone in law enforcement. I know, you know, why else are you calling at 6 o'clock on a Saturday afternoon? It's for a boating fatality. So please wear your life jacket. Reminder, you know, if you're out on Lake Wallapawpack or another, another larger lake, um, the rules for boating under the influence are the same as driving under the influence. So do not boat impaired. Officer Kramer and his colleagues are trained to look for signs of impairment, just like the police on the road are. So please wear your life jacket. Don't boat impaired. If you're going to be out on one of our awesome rivers and creeks like the Lackawaxen and using those, those new access points, make sure you have a float plan. Let someone know where you are. 
Um, we do see storms that will come and go these days that will sort of throw your plans off kilter. If it looks unsafe, just stay out of the water. You know, just just give it a little bit. If it's if it's murky and you can't see what's down there because the water is so chocolate milk, it's, it's, it's a good idea to stay out of there. Um, last thing I'll say is that trout season is still, you know, well underway. We've been stocking throughout Pennsylvania. Um, we'll do so uh, through the end of May. Lots of great trout fishing, uh, but Pennsylvania is, is, is second to none in the variety of, of fishing that we have. Daryl talked about the species you're going to see here. And really in Wayne County, I mean, you go, the, I, you probably have it better than anybody. Um, you go the whole way from the Delaware River, places like this. Creeks, the Diver, I mean, you name it, Lackawaxen, uh, Lake Wall and Pawpack, you really have it all in, uh, in Wayne County. So um, with that, that'll conclude the remarks uh, formally. Any questions for me or any of the speakers? Tim, can I just you share and, yeah. and say thank you to the Fish and Boat Commission and the Game Commission yeah. for legislation that I am introducing to authorize body cameras for the deputy mm -hmm fish and boat wardens and game commission members. So I view that as public safety, mm -hmm. officer safety, and protection of the general public so that everybody can view what's occurring on the body camera. So thank you for your you support of my legislation and we hope it moves pretty quick. Yep, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm glad Senator Baker mentioned the game commission. I gotta tell you, and Steve Smith, who's the new uh, director of the Game Commission uh, has been a good uh, longtime friend and colleague. It's the relationship right now between the agencies, DCNR, um, it's just, it's, we're working together. I mean, we are in an absolute groove here. I mean, it's, it's a pleasure to be doing this job. And, the, and yeah, we could not do it without our, without, without our partners in the legislature. So, you know, thank you, Senator Baker, and thanks for that legislation. Um, so, Mike, I am now going to have Mike explain to us what we're doing with the Golden Shiners. We're going to have two. We've got about how many, Jess, how many are in there roughly? Uh, roughly 20,000. Okay, so that's a lot of little fish. And so what we can, anybody, will maybe start with the legislators here, but anybody who, and like local residents who think it'd be cool to help us dump some in there ceremonially, what we can do is um, fill the buckets with water, put the fish in there, and then we'll literally just walk down there. It might be a little rough, might get a little wet. Um, and then we'll put them in the, uh, in the lake. And I will give Mike Parker credit for the golden buckets. Uh, we did that for the first time. I think that was at Meadowgrounds Lake out in Fulton County. A cool idea, right? You know, golden bucket to celebrate bringing it back. So we'll, we'll go down there, do the ceremonial stocking. And then if anybody, in particular reporters, a really neat image would be looking down in there. And, you know, Paul could do an interview and explain what you're looking at. So, okay. Mike, it's all yours.